Cool. In this video, we are going to talk about the five skills you need in actually physically handling a leash um, that's going to give you some real fire when it comes to teaching your dog that pressure equals follow, not just um, go hard into the harness and rip my limbs off. So um, you don't even need your dog for this exercise, but when you do, please make sure that you have a well-fitting harness that doesn't obstruct the movement of the joints and doesn't pinch on the back and a nylon leash. This will not work with extendy leashes. It must be a nylon leash that has a set length. Um, so first thing you're gonna do is actually just go and attach it to something inanimate. Um, I have attached mine here to a fence and we're gonna go through the five uh, different steps towards actually physically handling your leash and how we use it as a tool to communicate to our dogs um, just like you would reins in horseback riding. It's just an aid that we use in communicating with our voice, with our dogs, as well as our voice, our body language, um, and other various <laughs> things that you might use to communicate with your dog with, bar kicking them in the head. So, um, we're gonna go over them one thing at a time and then we're gonna practice them putting them all together. The first thing you're gonna need to learn is called the soft stop. So. The soft stop, imagine you're braking a car. Um, so when you're holding the leash, uh, various different practices, um, hold it various different ways. This is my personal preference to hold the leash. I like to have my safety on, always, um, and always two hands, especially when I'm teaching. Um, and especially if you're walking a dog that has perhaps some reactivity, you're gonna need quick maneuverability to go from a six foot leash to a two foot leash. Anyway, I want you to think about stopping in a car. So the soft stop, dog pulls ahead, soft stop, soft stop. Do you see how I'm squeezing? You can call it a squeeze stop if you prefer. Squeeze stop, squeeze stop, squeeze stop. Watch how my thumbs are pointing towards the dog. It gives a nice squeeze stop squeeze stop. Also note how I'm using my whole body language. I want you to do the same. I want you to use your whole body to just gently break. Soft stop. Soft stop. Probably gone about two inches worth of leash here. Soft stop. And this is so that the dog just doesn't go <laughs> um, exactly like breaking a car. You don't slam on the brakes unless it's an emergency. Um, you're going to soft stop. But the stopping is very important. We don't want to let them drag us away down the road, um, that's not a nice way to walk on the leash. They've, we've got to stop. Um, as soon as they're hitting the end of it, it's a stop. There goes my notes. Okay, so practice that now, the soft stop, soft stop. Second one, rebalance. So, soft stop. You're now almost at loggerheads with your dog and you're gonna be, have to read their body language to know when they're not pulling forward like this when you think they're gonna rebalance a little bit it's a rebalancing act between you and your dog you're then gonna give them the leash you see how I I literally give it back I give the leash back to the dog and what that says is make a choice because I've stopped you we've not gone any further I'm not letting you pull me down the street Okay, are we going to rebalance? Make a choice. Um, so practice those two together. Soft stop. Rebalance. So when you're walking, it should be like this. If you gently put pressure on the leash, they should follow you like that. And what happens when they pull is you go against each other like that. Brakes on. Now we need to rebalance so that we can continue walking nicely like that. Soft stop, rebalance. I'm rebalancing myself and I'm letting the dog rebalance too. Third step is then make a choice. Um, and we're going to encourage the correct decision by using our voice. So soft stop, rebalance. Step three, little noise to get their attention. This way, this way meaning follow me. We're then gonna turn because pressure equals follow and use our body language. We're gonna get a little bit lower, show them our tail a little bit, 
you don't have to over exaggerate this this gets very subtle very nuanced over time but then you're going to turn a little bit as if to say this way and then they're going to follow you are then step four we're just going to run through them but we'll go back going to so i'll stop fido's off over here is he is he is he gonna rebalance he rebalanced this way he's gonna turn you're gonna mark his reorient so the point of mark in this one is when they pulled you've then rebalanced you've then disappeared off the end of the leash then they go huh boom yes good job oh okay i'm coming like that <laughs> ava's down here she's getting very confused by all this why the leash not on me why not go for walkies uh-oh i said it okay soft stop rebalance make a choice encourage the correct one this way they turn yes They turn, yes, good job. Reward, down, in, position, always. I find it easier to gather my treats with my anchor hand, then transfer and deliver. This is your flexi hand. This is what I'm gonna use to deliver that boom as they've turned and followed, down, in, position. Boo, boo, it turns looking like a little like a dance routine. Okay. Oh, great, Ruby. What happens when they just keep charging forwards and they don't listen to me and they don't rebalance? Number one, are you over threshold? Are you too close to the thing that they want to get to? Um, note that thing if it's a bush or a pee post. If you're in within one foot, just keep the lead. Okay, so we've made a note of what the dog's pulling towards. And now what we've got to address is how to add in a couple of extra little skills into this leash um, skill set so that you can um, address the sticky points. So, soft stop, rebalance, dog goes, screw you ma, try one more time, rebalance, make your noises, encourage the correct decision. You can also add in here, slide. So I'm not pulling. Notice how this stays loose. I'm just adding movement. I'm just adding movement by sliding my fingers along the leash like that. Um, that movement on that buckle on their harness is going to kind of make them go, oh, what? And then they're going to turn around as if to say, oh, what? And you're going to mark the reorientation and then deliver that treat down like this. In the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. So, soft stop, rebalance. They're pulling again. Come on, come on, come on. Bop, 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 bop. Whoop. Yes, good job, boom, treat in place. Good job. And we're gonna run away from the thing that was causing us the sticky situation. Because really when we're out walking on the leash, it's about quality over quantity. Um, and about us increasing our observational skills, making sure we're very aware of our environment and what the dog might be orienting towards and wanting to get towards. Um, I've even had, we've had leash walking sessions where we have to walk in the middle of the road because the dog just wants to sniff on the grass. And that is so important for a dog to do. However, we've got to get these basics down before we then go and apply them into our everyday scenario. So, okay, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna do this? When are we gonna practice this? First practice on a fence. Get your mechanics down, um, and then you're gonna practice out of context. So you're gonna practice in a short training session uh, with your dog. I'm gonna show you um, in a different video how you're gonna put this into practice. Um, but really this means you should never ever have to pull, broke the fence, pull your dog away because what does that tell our dog pulling on the leash is okay I'm gonna pull you I'm gonna pull you that's not nice that's not uncomfortable it's not nice when somebody says come on let's go and start yanking you around 
you can use your leash as a communication tool, but we have to train the dog on what we want them to do when they hit the end of the leash, which is respond and follow the pressure. And if you're gonna hit the end of the leash, we ain't going nowhere. We're gonna actually change direction and start walking that way. Um, I hope that's been really helpful. So um, this is a technique based off Grisha Stewart's um, BAT, B-A-T, there's lots of acronyms in training, but her BAT training, which is behavior adjustment training, um, her leash skills, her loose leash walking skills, and she uses a 15 foot line. So you can practice these exact same skills if you're using a long line to exercise your dog because they pull like a maniac, but you still need to get out and about because you don't have a garden. So um, I hope that's been helpful. Practice that first, make sure you get your things down, and then we're gonna um, progress to the next level in the next video. Thank you.